Hello everyone, welcome. This video is going to be demonstrating the wireless abilities of a resonant coil. Um, if the coils are identical in length, and it also helps if it's similar in, in mass as well, but in particular it's the length of the um, the wire itself that makes the coil um, it doesn't have to be in a coil formation it can also be um, just a length of wire um, you know just bunched up as long as it's identical to the transmission coil it should still receive a signal so um, basically I've got the this coil here is connected up to the signal generator it has uh, the same length of wire as this coil which is separate and not actually connected in any manner other than through resonant coupling and both these coils have the same um, same uh, capacitor on them so the same capacitance of that capacitor um, and basically that's just because if you change the circuit in any way which I'll demonstrate here um, it will change the frequency that the circuit operates at so you try and keep when trying to achieve resonance try and keep everything the same uh, and you'll have a much easier chance of, of getting that coil to be powered. So if we turn on the signal generator and so currently it's at um, 10,000 Hertz or 10 kilohertz. So we'll change to change the waveform to a square wave and we'll put the voltage uh, I'll, I'll put the voltage up but um, what I'll do first is I'll re reduce that frequency um, down to a very low frequency and we'll start off at a thousand and we'll put the voltage or the amplitude up to maximum for this signal generator which is 20 volts and you can possibly hear at that frequency um, of a thousand hertz that there's an audio tone to that the units consuming uh, 8.2 watts of power and we don't have a very bright light there is some indication of light being produced there but that's not what you would call barely lit uh, so if we now increase this frequency we can get rid of that uncomfortable sound And we can see the lights turning on now so this light will operate anywhere from uh, I think it was a, a very low like even a thousand it actually does turn on um, and now we're at 2000 you can see it is clearly on but very dim so anywhere from a thousand Hertz all the way up to uh, 400 or 500 hertz I think 5 540 and and this particular light starts to switch out so one point to be made here is that the frequency is critical uh, you can see you know at, at that lower frequency the lights not really on and one would assume oh we don't have enough power and so 
in a normal situation most people would increase power we're keeping the power level the same and so all we're doing is adjusting frequency to make sure that um, we find whatever this coil natural frequency is and it's at this point that these two coils are actually communicating with each other uh, act it, one acting as as a transmitter this one as a transmitter and this one as a receiver but as i'll show you in a second they are both uh, transmitters and receivers so um, even though this is designated as the primary transmitter this one is receiving and retransmitting back to this one um, and then this is how don smith um, you know, use this principle in his devices um, and when these coils are at resonance you'll see at, at that wattage will reduce and so if we now increase that up to 400 hertz which I know this light begins to get bright um, and, and we can see that the frequencies, uh, sorry, the wattage has already decreased as we go up to achieve that higher resonance mode. And so you'll notice the, the LED light on that receiving coil will change in intensity as will the watt draw for the input for the uh, for the just signal generator and that's because when you achieve total resonance um, it's at maximum efficiency so maximum brightness minimum current draw um, so and the different frequencies have an have a different effect um, and for example i could move this away and we have no light now on that one would assume again that you would increase power to try and relight that that LED but the best method to prevent an increase in current draw is to change the frequency until you find again resonant frequency of that light at that position when you move there we go there so we're in the 400 mark i'll just remove that eight so we've got all zeros and so now we're in the 400 thousand hertz the 400 kilohertz uh, and we can see that light is wanting to come back on you now 410 420 430 is very bright, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and we can see now we're starting to go over the over the other side of that frequency where the light reduces at 500. So it's fair to say that that coil at that distance likes 470. Uh, kilohertz and so I can move it in it'll get brighter no increase in current draw and a noticeable decrease from where we started um, so presenting more efficiency and so if I slide that coil away until we get no light again assuming that power will fix the situation isn't necessarily the right way to go and so here we'll again adjust frequency we only had to go up 10,000 hertz then or 10,000 cycles per second that, that that is actually switching off and on uh, so fast that we can't measure it with the eye but that extra increase in frequency the oscillation rate changes that distance is now 
this arrangement at that distance requires 470 or 480 thousand hertz just to receive the power from the transmitter and so we'll go up again until we find its sweet spot at this new position and it looks like it's going to be around about the 510 mark and so again if we were to move that out we're going to go beyond the cameras range there move that out okay so we're, ju we're just out of the magnetic field there to the point where at those oscillations at 510,000 hertz that magnetic field is not stretching to this receiver coil however if we change the frequency again and not the voltage to 520 I think it turned on there yeah 520 and we can keep going until we find its optimum and so 520 530 seems to be reducing so if we go back to 510 and then we'll go up in smaller increments and fine tune that So it looks like the 520 is as bright as that's going to get from that distance. If we add in another coil, we can see the first as it approaches the coil on the right dims and goes out. So flat battery strikes again. So we can see with the distance between these two coils this light here is at the far range and just receiving transmission still we're about to switch off and if we bring another coil the same capacity capacity the same light same wire length coil so resonant with transmitter and first receiver uh, we pop that down in the middle you can see as it approaches it turns off receiver number one as it tries to absorb that magnetic field but as we get down to inside the actual field it not only receives but again transmits and so now the original tra uh, receiver there number one will turn back on because receiver number two this one is now extending the range of transmission um, so if we bring this one back and we can see I'll, I'll put um, another identical coil capacitor and light uh, and I'll put that down this side of the transmitter so that it lights up the um, the watt meter so we can see that we're at 5.4 watts there and it doesn't matter what we do at this point by removing loads conventional electronics um, if you remove loads you get a reduce current draw but these coils are being supplied their current through the magnetic field which does not register on the uh, on the electric field as an increase or decrease in, in current because that's not what's supplying it so if we move this one closer and get a, a brighter situation there and then we can move this one next to it increases in intensity we should 
dialing the best frequency for that situation to allow both or all three lights when you consider this one's pointing at um, at the watt meter so that looks about as evenly bright as we're going to get around about the 430 mark uh, sorry 530 kilohertz so now if we try and move this one out we can see its coupling starts to diminish with the magnetic field the light intensity reduces but because all of these are transmitters as well as receivers we can then move this one out and the outermost one on the right will start to increase and you've noticed the one I was moving has gone out so at this point this one that's gone out turns into primary primarily just a transmitter it receives its signal from the original transmitter and recognizes this as a closer coupling for the load and decides to share its power with this one if we remove this one we can see that the light's almost out place it back and so if we walk this transmitter as far as we can until we just about see the light going out then we can actually continue this process of increasing the transmission and you'll notice that this this receiver will increase in intensity as we walk this one away and it's basically a relationship a coupling between them both acting as receivers and transmitters so as we move them closer to each other one diminishes one increases and we get to a point there where we're about at, at the maximum distance um, for the small power transmission to be received and picked up so this can be attained if we uh, adjust the frequency for for that to ensure that just those coils are at optimum which looks like it might be around about 430 mark 440 and that's just dependent on the actual arrangement that you've got at that particular time if i change this arrangement by placing another coil here we can power all three of those lights with again no increase in power on the watt meter so it's a little hard to argue that it's not coming from somewhere else um, I, I understand these lights are small but this principle can be done at you know, higher amperages and higher uh, higher voltages as well uh, currently we're only doing this at 20 volts so um, the same applies it doesn't matter what the the wattage of the load is it's the principle um, behind how it's powered so here we have another led light on a coil this is a, a larger amperage led bigger led in general um, so we can place that there now this one i made differently deliberately 
to show how just being slightly different means a lot and in basically I'm referring to the coil length or the wire length for that particular coil it is two extra turns uh, longer than the other four coils in the picture and so that reduces its um, so that increases its frequency and it obviously is not resonant and and that's why it's not as bright as the other lights in saying that that it's not resonant and it's a different coil resonance still can be achieved over the combination of coils um, because each adjustment to this arrangement will change the capacity will change the resistance values um, so we basically need to retune every time we make any adjustment at all so if we change that frequency we may be able to increase the intensity of that light as well and you're sort of aiming at a balance between all of the loads um, that you achieve a similar level of intensity in light so that looks like it's around about the 460 mark so whereas we were at 430 440 and it wasn't it's not really lit 450 it turns on 460 470 is actually brighter again 480 and I think it's starting to go down at 490 so if we leave that at 480 and the same thing can be done with this separate load um, sorry this this um, non-resonant coil uh, we can adjust the frequency again move it away from the system we can use these as transmitters to increase intensity um, we can again adjust frequency never adjusting the power input just the frequency so it's not always a case of more power more power and so there it looks like 470 with that arrangement we can basically do whatever we want to with these these uh, wirelessly coupled systems we can have them side by side we could then piggyback this one off of this one and you see there it doesn't turn on or it just barely turns on and that's again frequency so if we adjust frequency we can come to some sort of agreement on coupling and depending on the arrangement you know we, we might be breaking up this this um, transmission field and so you will find different arrangements will give uh, different results so we can move those to any position that the magnetic field um, can penetrate so if we place that there they're all in line now so we again adjust the frequency so that we can have all four lights lit and as we go down 420 410 was where we were at originally with just the three coils and now if we go up 
so we can adjust to have all four lights running even though this coil isn't resonant with the other coils what the system is doing here is finding resonance of the entire set of coils and, and in essence tuning to some sort of a compromise it's not as strong as the first one but that's primarily because this coil is not resonant so if we remove that one and we just work with the coils that we know are resonant you can see just by adding a coil here this one's no longer lit because the frequency is incorrect for the three when we add this resonant coil it receives some of the frequency and backs up this coil but again best bet here is change frequency so that you get as close to an equal um, output in some cases you're just not going to obtain it and and that will be because of the arrangement that you've chosen um, if I move this light out here beyond the camera's view we can see that it too has decided to no longer accept the frequency so we need to change that frequency again and try and find um, a balance so that's basically it now this doesn't matter if you you can do this with um, uh, high voltage systems and this just sort of points out the importance of having um, everything resonant um, shout out to youtuber Comanche flight um, the alfoil uh, being on the alfoil um, the coils have a stronger transmission distance and uh, it's basically something called Zenic waves I'll put a link in the description uh, he brought that to my attention or Comanche flight brought that to my attention and um, explained a few things with my other circuits that helped me understand um, how some of those um, radio frequencies are being transmitted over longer distances so that um, that in essence amplifies uh, transmission distance acting as as an earth I believe um, and receiving the frequency and then retransmitting um, in this scenario at such a low voltage it doesn't have um, a great an effect as can be achieved um, but it still has a effect an effect so um, worth noting um, so yeah that's basically how um, Don Smith devices allow wireless power transfer now if you were using in this scenario here you could um, use any number of this arrangement make a coil system where coils of this nature can sit inside it um, and what you'll find is you'll be able to retain enough um, power to supply the source um, you know so one of these coils instead of having a light could be fed back to feed the uh, the circuit that's creating the original um, oscillation so it's um, when you know that there's no increase in current draw uh, when you have um, got the circuit to recognize the preferred frequency for that coil that transmitter coil 
and then you're basically getting that to an efficient state so there is no increase in power so basically it comes down to the magnetic field if the field is large enough you can put another light in it or another another circuit in it so this power could now be run back to feed for example the jewel thief that's running the original transmitter so again thanks for watching uh, please like and subscribe um, more importantly share this if you can because uh, it's great that that we now know this but there are those who don't so um, they could be saving themselves a bit of money on power if they're doing things slightly differently all right thanks again have a nice day